who would have thought that a game covered mainly in water would be such a good sandbox? The last encounter we're gonna get. Get this, get. Oh shit! Fight, 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 I'm repairing. Sea of Thieves had such an interesting development history. Originally, the game was announced during Microsoft's press conference at E3 2015, quickly garnering a lot of hype. Then, it released in 2018 to a very lukewarm reception. Critics agreed that the basis is solid, but the game lacked meaningful content. Players quickly got bored. Released a year after No Man's Sky, it was another one of those vastly overhyped games. Wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. But Rare, developers behind Sea of Thieves, did exactly what Hello Games did. They didn't abandon their games. No, they worked really hard to deliver on their promises and give the community the best product. The finest games they could have wished for. The stories of both Sea of Thieves and No Man's Sky are the stories of redemption. Games which pulled themselves up from mixed or negative initial reception into an overwhelming acceptance and glory. It's a strong reason to give second chances and maybe to wait a little bit before playing the game. You see, I like playing the games couple years after release when they are in their most complete state, patched up with additional content. When I started playing Sea of Thieves this year, I was astonished with its potential. It's the ultimate story maker. Each run opens up possibilities for an unforgettable adventure. It creates stories you want to share with other people. So, let me tell you my story. So... What the hell? Great! You did it on your own. Can you adjust the save? Save me, Captain. Wait, 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 wait. I have a sniper rifle. Maybe, maybe I'll do it. Oh! Yeah, yeah, we are fine. We are fine. Right now. Hello, friendly, friendly. My specialty at this point. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Oh, no! 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 <laughs> Fuck. May I request permission to come aboard? <laughs> Fucking shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> this is the late review Sea of Thieves. This review is based on 441 hours spent in game. I was playing since January 2023 with no previous experience regarding the game, which means that I also played through season 8 and season 9. It's important to me as I wanted to see how new seasons enrich the game and if the game is stable during that process. I have completed all tall tales, all fort types, all underwater shrines and treasuries, most voyage types and I could go on and on. What I'm getting at is that I really wanted to experience everything the game has to offer. I was a part of various crews, different ships, with varied amounts of people. Most of the time it was my real life friends I grouped up with, but I have also played with random pirates. Hello matey, what do you want to PvP. do today? PvP. Okay, why not? I want to take a moment to thank every magnificent pirate who sailed with me during my various adventures. Throughout my enormous time spent on the sea, I managed to acquire 173 achievements, which translates into 81% achievement completion. I am going to use various types of footage during this video. Some of it was recorded while sailing with my friends talking in Polish. In order to make it understandable, I will place English subtitles on the screen. Trafiłem. Już trafiamy. Wyjebło. Jak bazyliskiem 40. Pyta. Wiem, że gdzie oni są. Gdzie oni są? 
Jak tam jesteś na pokładzie, to sobie można by wbiec i teraz rozpierdol zrobić na uparty. No, ale nie mamy jak tam. Zwincie żagle, żebyśmy szybciej nawrócili. Mam ci zwinąć, tak? Przed niej zwin, tyle. Zwin, żebyśmy szybciej kręcili. Dobra, rozwijamy żagle do połowy przynajmniej. Wiesz co, Szander się tam dzieje mniej więcej? Jestem u nich, zaczęli się ruszać, siedzę na razie na drabinie. Siedź na drabinie. Oni na nas lecą, oni na nas lecą. Lecą na was, lecą na was, zderzycie się, zderzycie się. Może się trafić, trafić no? Nie, nie wydaje mi się. A jestem od strony, kurwa, żeby mnie to nie ściągnęło. Teraz będę miał kąt, teraz będę miał. Przyczepili się się. Lecą na nas. lecą. Chodzę. Kurwa, biją mnie. Dwóch jest. Chyba nie mam Jeden z nich padł. Anem. Umarłem. Lowerujesz ja kotwicę. Ja umarłem. Kurwa, to po nas. Nie, ale Shander jeszcze... Co, to pierwsze utonie, bo możliwe, że zrobiliśmy im więcej dziur. Shander, Dwóch nich nie żyje! E, skamp się tam, skamp się tam. No, skamp się na ich łata, nie Na średnim się wlewa wodę. No, utoną, nie zdążę nas zatopić. Nie zdążę, na pewno. O, są Mamy, utopili się! No, jest. Utopili się. A, kurwa! Chuj! O! So, as I boldly claimed, Sea of Thieves is the story maker. And to prove that, I'm going to show you my various adventures during the runtime of this video, starting with this one. This is the chase. This voyage starts with a crew of three pirates bravely scouring the sea. Got wow, we, we got all. Okay. First sail to half and shoot at the... Ooh, there are so many ghosts. Shoot if you can. Even from afar. I'm dead. Uh, he disappeared. We did it, we did it. Repair, repair the ship. Everything went fine until we noticed that someone was trying their luck on Fort of the Damned. In our greedy minds, it was a perfect opportunity to strike. That's a sloop, that's a sloop, that's a sloop. Oh, there's two. Two sloops? Uh, galleon and sloop. Galleon and sloop. Ooh, ah, they are now good. That's interesting. They are both. They're fighting. They're lower. fighting. They're fighting. No, no, ah, okay. they're not. Yeah, they're, they're not. fighting. They're not. No, I'm gonna jump there. Only Galion, should I? Yes, you should. Uh, and I'll do. What it if they you. are in the alliance? I don't care. Go for the bow. Do you have bow also? Right now? Yes, you should have. I'm going. I'm climbing cannon. Shoot me. Shoot me. Okay. Thanks. They're panicking, yes, they're panicking. Turns out that the sloop was in an alliance with the Galleon. They managed to defend themselves, forcing us out. But that's not where the story ends. They managed to find us later in the open seas and thus the chase began. Sailing against the blowing wind made us faster than the Galleon, but sloop was able to catch up to us. So we tried different ways of slowing the chasers down in order to split them. We're friendly. You're friendly, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, someone's coming. I'm trying to come. Yes, yes, yes. I see. Hello. Hello. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. Did he just die? He's. <laughs> Yeah. Left and right. Damn mermaid, no. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Go, 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 go. I'm going to kill mermaid. Ah, got it, but I'm dead. I'm the Zeus. But you heard that, right? Yeah. I'm boarding again. Anchor lowered. Uh. Ooh, I got, uh, got him with a sniper. Ooh, got another he killed me, kill him, kill him. We even tried to maneuver around the rocks. Then this happened. Jeszcze przyciągam mocno, 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 mocno. I puść, dobra, mamy to. Kraken! Kraken go to Galleon! English! What? 
Kraken put it. Galleon, Galleon is forty fighting with a Kraken in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Ja się, ja wyskakuję, ja prób... Sorry, mm. I mean, I enjoy... Oh, też Yo, Kraken got your and friends! <laughs> Unfortunately, we weren't able to capitalize on the opportunity given to us by Sea of Thieves. In a last ditch effort, we decided to sail under an active volcano. Enemy Galleon is a pretty big ship, so there's a greater chance that it would be hit by falling fireballs, right? If we want to... Hmm. Whoa! Uh, I'm dead. <laughs> so what are we doing? Do, do, we, do we, we scatter it now? Let's cut, let's cut, let's cut. Let's cut. With our own plans turning against us, we decided to let it go. But the story of the chase was born that day. Let's start with the basics. In Sea of Thieves, players create their avatar from a pool of randomly generated pirates. And those characters, well, they look kinda odd. It's really hard to find a pirate who would suit your needs completely. But that's fine, it only adds more charm into the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> After creating your avatar, I would highly recommend heading into Maiden Voyage, as it is a pretty good tutorial. This short scenario teaches players the basics of the gameplay mechanics in a secluded area, safe from interventions of other players. In Maiden Voyage, the foundations are laid to prepare every newcomer to become the future menace of Sea of Thieves. With the first tutorial adventure out of the way, it's time to talk about the real game. When you want to log into the game servers, you have to choose a ship under your command. There are three types. Sloop, smaller, versatile, maneuverable ship, designed for solo players and crews of max two people. Then there is Brigantine, slightly bigger ship with two cannons at each side, which equals to more firepower. Unfortunately, it loses on maneuverability and is designed for a crew of three people. The biggest ship, the Galleon, is a force to be reckoned with. Each side with the ship is equipped with a row of four cannons. Additional floor, which increases the ship's durability, makes the Galleon a sturdy tank. But the downside is that it's supposed to be manned by a crew of four people who have to be really good with their communication as during naval warfare it's significantly harder to operate the ship successfully. Okay, I'm on the ship, I'm on the ship. What the hell? Oh, you don't have mass. How do they shoot us that fast? Very good. I am dying, okay. I'm dead. Um, don't know what to do! I don't know what to do! Actually... We wanted to pray on them, but it's said they are killing us so far. Galleons are sea cows, they are slower, harder to maintain, can sink really fast if you forget to repair middle floor and are outmaneuvered by smaller ships. It's actually not that uncommon for Galleon to be outplayed by a skilled crew of a small sloop. So whatever you are selling, skill and creativity is still key. Sea of Thieves offers a magical and colorful open world. Vast oceans welcome pirates to explore sunken depths, various islands and ruined strongholds. The main goal of each voyage is to explore the seas, gather some precious loot and then sell it to earn money. Rare's wonderful gameplay design shines through Sea of Thieves' simplicity and freedom. You are a pirate in this large open world and just like a true pirate you are totally free to do whichever activity you want to do. This unshackled approach lets players make their own fun. Each outpost is a home to a couple of factions happy to give you some work to do. You can rise within their ranks, making money and unlocking new cosmetic rewards, or you can just sail to the nearest island and see if you can find something interesting there. Most of the time you will. The game invites players to enjoy its story missions, sea mysteries or timed adventures. Each server has a random world event running all the time. As soon as one event ends, another one spawns. Five years after launch, Sea of Thieves offers an enormous amount of content, and it's all pretty simple to comprehend. Rare avoids the traps of making their game too convoluted with each new patch. Right from the start, most of the content is available to you. Yes, some of the story missions are available after completing previous ones for the sake of continuity and there is the Athena's Fortune faction, available later in the game, but most of the content is available for everyone from the very beginning of their adventure in Sea of Thieves. 
it again enforces the fantasy of being a pirate, a free roamer of the open seas while still leaving some content to unlock later in the game. Beautiful. Here. Or not. Ah, here I see. Here. Ghosts. Okay, so after discussing the overall design of the world and accessibility, it's time to dive into more mundane gameplay loop. You see, sailing ships in Sea of Thieves requires more effort than simply interacting with the wheel and pressing W. You actually have to raise the anchor, lower sails, which can be then readjusted to take into account the side from which the wind is blowing. Steering wheel is used only for steering. Your ship's speed depends on the sails, and it all has to be managed. You need to use spyglass, preferably atop of your ship's crow's nest, so you can see if there is any danger ahead. Sea of Thieves introduces a little bit of management and tedium into its gameplay loop, but does it in a such perfect, non-invasive way that it's not perceived as hindrance. On the contrary, ship management unlocks the true potential of player's agency, skill and creativity. You can use your ship to ram other ships, great helmsmen can guide cannoneer fire as they are able to see more, they also fight with other ships for better positioning, so your cannons have range, but other ships doesn't. Crewmates cannot forget about repairing the vessel during battle or they will surely end up sunk. Players confident in their sword and gun skills can try to invade enemy ships in a heat of battle to take out enemy crew. It's hectic, chaotic, but most of all, it's glorious. They're trying to shoot at me. You alone, man? Ah, you're free. Yo! Yo! It goes without saying that Sea of Thieves is not a mere PvE game, it's PvEVP. Each server is open for maximum of 16 people, split into 5 crews max. It's a perfect number, players who want to fight other crews can fight them without too much hassle. Solo players or crews who do not wish to fight have a chance to mind their own business and hide. But you can never forget about the threat of other pirates trying to sink your ship and steal your loot. No, the threat never vanishes. Sinking other players' ships and taking their hard-earned treasures feel fantastic, but we cannot forget that this fate will likely also meet your crew from time to time. And then, then it feels terrible, as sometimes you might lose an hour's worth of plunder. This element of gameplay introduces real stakes for players. Pirates have to be alerted at all times. I found it exciting, but some of my friends actually heavily dislike this part of Sea of Thieves. Bah! The best way to portray this phenomenon is to recall my own progression through the game. I'm constantly learning. There is a ship. I can see and it's... Ah, I'll under just the look. deck, yeah? Hello? Where the... Hello? Oh. Me too, and... Uh, yeah, they are shooting. Do okay, we fight so or do we move? They move. Okay. We lost like half of our things. When I started I was frantically scouting every edge of the map, especially while sailing with my wife. Monica heavily dislikes PvP as it's too stressful for her. So at the start we ran away from combat, trying to mind our own business. But later, as I've got more experienced, I started to look for a fight in the vast seas. Get ready. Stand by search us. Ok, 
wielkiej skarby tu już mają. Skoczę, skoczę, skoczę. Jak jestem? Uważaj, tu poprzyjdę, a że Jest, schowam się na dole tutaj, u nich. A, i już mogą strzelać do naszego startu z tych. Idę do fortu. Podnoszę kotwicę i będę tu krążył. The tedium referring to sailing on ships is transferred to other mundane gameplay mechanics. Each piece of loot you find has to be brought to the ship by the players. It takes time. Then you need to store it on the ship. Various gameplay elements in Sea of Thieves rely on taking that one extra step which most of the modern games avoid. Let's face it. By the modern standards, simply pressing a button would teleport the treasure to your ship, so it wouldn't be inconvenient to the player. But in here you have to do it all by yourself. This is a conscious decision and I'm going to defend it. When everything you do takes a little bit of extra work and effort, it makes you value it more. Not only that, it takes time. In a world where you can get attacked by other players at any point, it raises the stakes opens up possibilities for some clever approaches. You have to keep attention even when trying to sell your hard-earned loot. It might feel boring, but it isn't pointless. And don't worry, it goes both ways. Finding an enemy with their pants down is an easy win most of the time. Three slopes. Let's go with the sails. Uh, let's make them... Let's move, let's move, just let's move. I want to see what's gonna happen. Someone's uh, aimed here. Yeah. Hello! Ah, that's what you want to do, okay! Yeah, it's already sunk, okay. So let's just sunk the other guys and we can do whatever the hell we want in here. Just in there. He shot me. I hope he will come to us. He's swimming. He's close to me. Come to me. Hello. He's dead, okay. The other guy is on the other side. I see him. Then stop shooting. Stop shooting. Get ready to fight. And he's dead, okay. Chill, chill, chill. Please. Change position. No, they are, they are done. So yeah, I commend Rare's approach to gameplay. Recently, Season 9 introduced a lot of quality of life improvements, which made some mundane gameplay elements a little bit less monotonous. Before Season 9, you had to manually take every piece of loot from harpoons. Right now it automatically stacks behind you, making it much easier and more efficient to play a solo player. Rare's ingenious design of various gameplay mechanics truly shines when they are connected with each other. The philosophy of open world, both in terms of exploration, but also freedom of choosing content. It gets mixed up with some tedium of acquiring loot in a world where other players might attack you at every given moment. It creates a foundation so strong that with enough side content it can provide hundreds of hours of fun. Ah, the content! While at launch Sea of Thieves lacked additional activities to spice things up, right now the content offering is very strong. I'm on the ship, I'm on the ship. What the hell? Oh, you don't have mask? Full sails for the fortune then. <laughs> I will sell a little bit to the left, so... <laughs> no! Sneaky robo. <laughs> they, there is no way they will see us. Zabiłem jednego. Thanks to its rich content offering, no two runs in Sea of Thieves are the same. There are just too many variations. So what can you do in Sea of Thieves?
As I said before, every server has one world event running all the time. As soon as it's done, the new one spawns. World events are signaled either as specific cloud in the sky or as those huge vortexes which can be seen from afar. A red vortex signals that there is a world boss, an ashen captain spawned on an island. Killing them drops ashen themed loot as well as a very pricey flame skull. That skull can also be used to set enemies and their ships ablaze. Already we can see that the loot is differentiated not only by its rarity and price. Some items are actually quite useful during adventures. Skeleton forts are another type of world events. Cloudy skull with green eyes flashing on the skies means that there is a regular skeleton fort spawned. The flaming skull seen above players' heads signalizes Fort of Fortune, a harder version of the fort which contains much better loot in its vault. Forts scale with the number of players attending them, but beware, because usually you are not the only crew sailing to plunder Stronghold's riches. After Season 9, Fort of Fortune drops this extremely expensive chest, called the Chest of Fortune. So nowadays, whenever a flaming skull sets the skies ablaze, there are at least two ships fighting over its precious loot. It's also a perfect place for creative use of gunpowder barrels. Basically, a bombs which can be moved by players. Okay, so that's the plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the ship here. There's just a sloop, so I have a chance to actually just destroy it, but I'm gonna try to go with gun. Getting closer. They shouldn't be able to see me as they will look for other ships, but not for the robot. And I have a surprise for them. It didn't work as I wanted to, but let's see. <laughs> no, that's... Oh, that's fucking interesting. Shit. There is a lesson to be learned there. If you are going to play with gunpowder kegs, you need to be damn sure what are you doing. Uh-huh. Okay. 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 I thought no, I saw someone in. Uh, dude, you, you could at least uh, pretend that you're not here. Come on. Zabiłem go. I jak będziemy zbierać skarby, to trzeba będzie najpierw sprawdzić cały statek, czy on gdzieś nie leży. Albo się nie zamienić gdzieś w leczkę. Jest. Zajebiście. Cheese. Fuj. Dobra. Gdy te. Puszki są, beczki są wszystkie ok. Nie bierzemy hegów. <laughs> Ale chyba, że weźmiemy na tą małą łódeczkę. No, God, please, no, no, no! Pan, że jak dotyka zewnętrznej strony statku, to wybucha. O kurwa, ktoś mnie rozjebał. To, to wy? Ktoś mnie, nie, ktoś z graczy, wszyscy nie żyjemy? Ja żyję. To naprawdę Ale... statek, statek dostał. Jest, je, kurde, je, to jest osobny typ. Kurwa mać, czyli jednak. And sometimes you don't even need enemies to blow you up. All you need are your crewmates. Ej, czemu palę się, ej? O kurwa, nie wiedziałem, że to się... O kurwa! Co to było? Wszystkie gunpowdery na O je... Ja odłożyłem czaszkę na tej i nie ruszałem, kurwa. Czemu to wybuchło? Jaki sposób to Jarek się bawił czaszką ognistą? Ta... Nie, właśnie, kurwa, ja ją odłożyłem po prostu, lol. Okay.
There is also one more fort. Fort of the Damned is an event which can be started only by players with the right setup. After season 9 dropped, it's quite easy to launch it. This event is another magnet towards enemy ships, so beware. Every outpost is a home to representatives of every main Sea of Thieves faction. Golden Hoarders work on gathering valuable chests and golden riches. Merchant Alliance focuses on commodity crates and trade goods, which also includes caught chickens, pigs and snakes. The Order of Souls is a faction of mystics who hunt numerous skeletons roaming the world of the game. You can buy voyages for each faction and do jobs for them, of course for a decent pay. There's also an option to devote your ship to one faction for a run by declaring yourself as an emissary of the faction. This way you will get progressively more gold for selling them the goods. But being an emissary is also dangerous as sinking an emissary ship is also rewarded. Notably by the Reapers, an evil organization which for gameplay purposes focuses on PvP. Reaper emissaries can sell any riches to their faction representatives. They are also shown on the map for everyone to see. Still, their main goal is to sink other ships and hand in their logbooks and emissary flags to Reaper's representative. Athena's Fortune is a faction available only to the Pirate Legends, a status given to the more experienced players. This is one of the goals which you can strive for. This faction unlocks some awesome cosmetics as well as new voyage types. Talking about gated content, Tall Tales. Those are uh, story missions which are designed to be played at specific order for it to make sense. They are a welcome addition, but I will talk more about them in the story section of this review. Timestamps are in the description. Rare throws a lot of other content towards the player base. Ancient shrines hidden deep beneath the waves, each one of them with different puzzles to solve. Smaller scale phantom fortresses with their own ghostly treasures. Then each of the outposts has those Witcher 3 like quest boards where you can pick up single treasure maps left there by other pirates. If you want you can also bury some of your own loot and place a map for other pirates to find it. Then in a Diablo 3 esque fashion there is this currency skeleton. It's a very rare spawn. When it appears, it makes a very loud noise as to alert every player nearby. Then it runs away for a while and then vanishes. If you manage to kill it before it runs away, then you will be rewarded with premium currency. This is a bold move. I can hardly recall any other company giving away premium currency to the player base. Of course it's a rare spawn, but if you play a lot like me, then you will find some of those skeletons during your adventures. So mad respect towards developers at Rare. This is a commendable approach. PvP is another type of activity which of course is very popular in the game. Open World offers multiple locations for clashing against other teams. Season 8 added a new type of PvP focused content. The patch added two warring factions. Player can choose one of them and take part in matchmaking PvP where they clash against other teams. This whole system adds another layer on top of everything as it adds hourglass, which value goes up as you sink ships from the opposing faction. It's also a gamble. How long will you stay afloat until you meet your match at the sea? Whoever designed Season 8's matchmaking PvP did a solid job. People craving for PvP can duel against each other, which gives some breathing space towards regular crews who want to just roam the world and do PvE stuff. They will never be safe, but a lot of the sweaty nerds clash with each other making the open world a little bit safer. I really enjoyed the option to queue as a solo slooper, fighting only against other solo slooper. This way I controlled my fate. I probably cancelled too slow. So the third battle. Place to fight. Such a good place to fight. It's gonna be 
bad. Whether you love or hate PvP, you cannot deny that it's an integral part of Sea of Thieves DNA. Even though I've lost my ship countless of times to other pirates, I learned to love the thrill of naval combat. It's addicting. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We will have to go. the fire Keep to both of them. Jeden dobry abordaż tak jak nasza. Proszę bardzo. Patrz, pa, 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 pa. After particularly hard encounter, there is always time for some fishing. This mini game actually offers some depth as there are many various types of fish around different zones of the map. Some of them can be only caught close to shipwrecks. There are stormfish, which appear only during heavy storms. Then you can cook your catches in order to sell them for more gold or to make food giving you an additional HP regen. There is depth to everything, man. There is depth. During our first 100 hours in the game, my friends and I like to end our evening journeys with group fishing, talking about our crazy adventures or simply catching up on real life stuff. It was relaxing. Right now I play with more aggressive crew. So after we are done with our journeys, we simply cannot let all of those supplies to go to waste, right? So we queue in for PvP until we are defeated. Welcome to a documentary, the life of a solo slooping unexperienced pirate. Our cameraman successfully sneaks into another pirate's ship. I'm sailing with some other pirate. He doesn't know that I'm on his ship. I want to see where he will go. He patiently awaits until his prey, uh, the pirate, sails into their destination, leaving the ship unguarded. Okay, he anchored. What a marvelous coincidence, a gunpowder barrel right next to a docked ship. In an effort to bait a reaction out of other pirate, our cameraman decides not to be polite and places an explosive keg inside the ship. Hey, dude. Let's go on a search for this individual and see how they are trying to best the island without their ship. Here the cameraman examines the action of the other pirate from a safe distance. The pirate is battling against scurvy skeleton captain. Wow, kinda weird movement, strafing without looking. Ooh, ah, new player. He went to the statue, ooh, it's hurting me. He's trying to go for it from range. Ah, I destroyed the ship of a new player. Oh, go to your ship, go to your ship. I want to see the reaction. Shit, 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 shit. 
Oh, our cameraman might get discovered. A vile ocean crawler spawned near him. Fortunately, the cameraman dealt with the danger undetected, but we lost sight of the other pirate. I think it's on me. It's still on me. Where's your ship, mate? Seeing no point in fighting without ship, the pirate swims away to the mermaid, which will teleport him to wherever their ship spawned. Let this be a lesson for him, that dirty tricks are a daily occurrence in Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Sea of Thieves goes for stylized approach to its graphics, with light-hearted, a little bit cartoony spin on the world and its characters. I like it, this art style imbues the game with its unique soul. The never-ending vast oceans are beautifully rendered, the water in these games looks so pretty, and it works so good, rarely does it clip through your ship, which is so impressive. The map of Sea of Thieves, split into regions, differs depending on which seas players explore. The Wilds is a darker part of the world, with a bit more grim feeling and atmosphere. Islands in there tend to have less foliage, and brown is the dominating color. Waters of Devil's Roar are the most dangerous, as ships have to be careful not to sail too close to active volcanoes. The islands in that region are also very unstable, coated with ash and burnt debris. The west side of the map is vibrant with colors. Islands are densely covered with foliage, and by the way, Pay attention to how beautifully it moves while someone or something goes through high grass or ferns. My only criticism would be that the two sunny green zones do not differ that much from each other. One is supposed to be more tropical, but they end up feeling too similar. Lighting in the game does wonders. It's especially apparent during nighttime. Nights in Sea of Thieves are really dark. If you get caught exploring an island in night, a handheld lantern might be your only hope. It also helps greatly during cave exploration. Light can also play a crucial role in the gameplay. Each ship is lit by a set of lanterns. The problem is that it makes your vessel more visible from afar. So what my crews ended up doing most of the time was turning the lights off. VFX effects truly shine during underwater exploration. Ancient shrines are a true visual masterpieces, overgrown by colorful reefs. Graphics are used really well to underline the great level design. Each underwater shrine has a unique design with some additional hidden areas. The same can be said about most islands. Some of them hide more than one secret. Areas which can be pretty hard to find. Exploration in Sea of Thieves is very rewarding. What do I keep hearing? We're being attacked! We're being attacked! In a game where players need to be on their toes, constantly ready for a fight, a good sound work is a necessity. Fortunately, Sea of Thieves delivers on that front. Sounds of clashing swords, different guns shooting, cannons blasting. It's all very, very good. Skeletons, grunts, weird ocean crawlers noises help players to recognize which enemy is near before they can see them. Then there are great sound cues informing players that their ship is slowly sinking or that the mast is damaged or even that someone is trying to board their ship. Those are incredibly useful tools for more experienced pirates, details which can make a difference during combat. Voice actors sell this fantasy of a magical pirate land really well. I have noticed one problem with the proximity sound work. Sounds of guns blazing or the noises of enemies close to you are extremely well done. They help you recognize from which side they come and how far the enemy is. 
the system unfortunately doesn't do that well in differentiating height. There can be a skeleton group in a cave system under your feet or 5 meters above you. Unfortunately the game does a poor job in making clear where the source of the sound exactly is. Most of the time players hear those skeletons as being close to them, not taking into account the height difference. Ah, and if you are using a microphone then make sure to go into settings and switch it to push to talk as it's set to open mic by default. Jesus, this... I'm friendly, this is. I'm not like my friend, I'm super, super idol! Super idol! Oh no, we... <laughs> Aito, we gonna head to out on out. Thank you guys, Aroto. Because I am the hot wife of you are dreams. Music in Sea of Thieves is a true work of art. Rarely do I play a game where the whole soundtrack is so good and memorable. The various renditions of the main theme, the emotional shanties. Music in Sea of Thieves is simply incredible. I absolutely love it. Oh, Captain Ryan Scurvison, hello! Come on, Monica, take piece of Mr. Scurvison. Unfortunately, as painful as it is to admit, Sea of Thieves still suffers from a decent amount of technical issues. What's weird, they seem to vary between players. Many issues pointed out by my teammates didn't appear to me during my time spent with the game. Then, there were some bugs that were common for all of us. So, let's start with crashes. I'm using a pretty strong PC, RTX 3070 Ti, this sort of stuff. In my hundreds of hours spent with the game, I experienced very few crashes. My wife, who plays on a little bit older setup, had more crashes. Then there is a friend of mine who had at least one, usually multiple crashes during each playing session. So I guess it might vary depending on your PC specs. Now let's talk about bugs. Ok, the first thing, the equipment window tends to bug out and overlays over your gameplay. There's no option to turn it off. I think this one occurred to every crew member I have played with at least once. It happened to me a couple of times. The only way to get rid of the bug is to relog. Another one. Attacks and blocks stop working. With it, any interactions are also taken away from the player. It happened more during season 8, but to this day I keep having small stutters while changing weapons when for the first couple of seconds I cannot attack. And I'm taking into account the weapon switching animation. Sea of Thieves also has some problems with loading times. Fairy of the Damned is a place where players need to wait a couple of seconds after each death before they can leave it and respawn. Usually the loading time after leaving the ferry takes seconds. Sometimes it tends to bug out and take more time. In a battle scenario it's infuriating. But what's even more infuriating is a situation where the screen stays black and doesn't let you respawn. It always happened to me in a heat of battle. For example during solo sloop PvP which meant that I couldn't defend my ship. GG Don't tell me that I've got this black screen back. So that's it with the PvP, right? I can address. There are many more bugs in Sea of Thieves. Glitchy animations, vanishing clothes, loot not showing for every player. Merchant representatives tend to glitch out and not give the goods that you have already paid for. Give me my storage! I paid for it! Give me my storage! Can you take it? Oops, no. 
then we are going without storage, okay. Sea of Thieves uses a very weird physics engine. While it works properly most of the time, there are moments when it might glitch out in an unexpected way, shooting players or even whole ships high into the sky. Another issue plaguing Sea of Thieves is the iffy shot registration. It's a known issue and listen, I'm really polite, eager to learn and get good, but it just feels like there is some RNG in hit registration, especially while using blunderbuss. In close distance, it should be able to one-shot other players. But I swear that sometimes, for some weird reason, not all pallets connect to the target, which is frustrating, as I'm standing almost on top of them. So just be aware that there are some shenanigans referring to hit registration. But you know, it works both ways, so sometimes it might save you. What doesn't work both ways is cheating. This is a pretty big problem. There are many cheaters in Sea of Thieves. Their numbers are not that high as to destroy the experience, but unfortunately, during your time spent in the game, occasionally you will encounter some cheaters. In a game where stakes feel kinda real and sometimes you might lose hours worth of loot, cheating is not acceptable. It's common enough that when I'm getting sunk, I keep wondering if the enemy crew was just better, more skilled, or if they just cheat. Again, I don't want to be salty, so I tend to accept my losses as my lack of skill, but sometimes cheating is just too obvious. Settings menu allows for some much needed customization, also allowing to choose from different methods of social filters and chat options. This is a very welcomed addition as there are kids playing this game. Yeah, Krug mass looks exactly like the drawing. Brigantine! Where? They are doing... no. Are they? They are not moving. Are they doing a shrine? I'm curious if they have a lookout on that rig. We are not going there. Now oh, let's just finish the total. Can you go to the Thieves Heaven on your own? Yeah. I'll try to get to them. Ah. Uh, no. I'm there. I can burn their ship to be honest. Do it. Why not? And I'll sell away. I'm raising the rent. I'll crash their ship on the rocks. Oh, it slowly starts to. Oh, they came back. I can hear it. Oh, Shure! Shurek jakiś na pali! Shurek 77 dosłownie! Shurek 77 to mnie kiedy! Idź sobie! It's a Polish guy! Idź coś tam! Odpływa nam! Those are kids! Oh, I feel bad they're talking in Polish! They, they call me Shurek 77! <laughs> they're still there? I'm going wait, I'm going to crash their ship. Did you kill them? Oh, I killed one. Oh, nice. Ten debil nam cały statek zjebał. Language. Co się tu odpie? Language. Zostaw nam statek, chuju. Tak. Na kim się kurwa polski? Pierwszy. Ten debil ma nie kurwa. Zjeb pierdolony. Is it open mic? Śmieciu, rozjebałeś nas statek, kuju pierdolony. <laughs> Come on. Come no. on. Uh. Sea of Thieves has its own well thought out lore. This world operates around its own iconic and legendary characters. What's more, Rare constantly writes another pages in their pirate saga. They keep introducing new changes with patches and new seasons. 
The world of Sea of Thieves evolves not only from the gameplay standpoint, but also through its lore. Developers allow players to actually be part of this process. They introduce events which ask players to pick a side. A good example would be the whole Merrick storyline, a legendary hunter who ended up dead and now can be found in a certain hideout as a ghost. Another good example which I have actually seen was the new Golden Suns outpost, a huge settlement which was slowly transformed into a fully fledged port. And all of that was an effect of players' actions during certain events. Rare keeps releasing some narrative events, further progressing the ongoing Sea of Thieves story. It's done through mysteries which are supposed to be solved by the players or through timed adventures. Release windows do not pack those content releases too densely, but still, it's a commendable approach to developing the live service storyline. Tall tales are another repeatable form of story content. They work pretty much as a voyages with a narrative plotline. Tall tales are divided into story arcs. Shores of Gold is the main storyline of Sea of Thieves, at least for now. This narrative arc spans across nine different tall tales. It's an engaging story about searching for the legendary treasure hidden away from prying eyes. It starts with reclaiming the Shroudbreaker, a mythical artifact which according to the legends should be able to guide pirates into the shores of gold. Tall tales are structured mostly in a similar fashion. They guide players to specific locations where they have to solve a puzzle, reclaim an item or fight a specific enemy. The main focus is put on puzzles though. Players receive a book containing tips and leads. <gasps> The beautiful thing in Rare's approach to story content is their strong belief in player's intellect. There is no arrow which directly shows you where to go, well, not counting the special compasses but they are a right which you have to earn first. Sometimes player is given a map or a scribble and they have to deduce where exactly they have to go. Or it might be a story describing one's adventures and from it players have to reproduce the steps of the author. I love it, but I have to admit that later towards the story arc, the puzzles become more convoluted and I have to use the internet two or three times as I got stuck. Still, this is such a respectful approach to storytelling. Having to actually figure things out for yourself is refreshing. It also makes you realize how low the standards of storytelling have fallen in modern gaming. Okay, that's the waterfall, so that's the start. Then we are to this scarab stone which is here. Then we need to go deeper into the cave, which is here. And when we will see ladder up, we're going up, which is here. Okay, we are here. Now we need to look for another cave, which is there. Bridges. Maybe, yes, it's, it's here, two bridges, okay. Is someone attacking the ship? There's a chest. chest. It's behind us. It's probably the it's here. star. We got it. Okay, bye. How am I supposed to know what I'm, sh what I should be doing? I'm just. Ah, that's uh, it. Okay, a tear of the sun fell down to land, and lit the way for men to sail. What do we have? Maybe this. What do we have? Show me, show me. Okay. Tear of sun, maybe. Lit the, the way. way. Okay, maybe that's it. Then, uh, for men to sail. Sail. Okay. And? Even the warmonger was brought to peace, he was taught more than war by iron shell. Let's try it. 
Nope. Let's try, let's try it. No. Try it now. Yes. That's the first part, now the second. The quarter danced in new light. The quarter danced in new light. Oh shit. Tall tales are repeatable and it's not done in a lazy way. You see, each tale has a pool of possible locations where player can be sent and the game determines which of them are chosen randomly. So there is a variety if maybe you want to do the tale with a friend who hasn't done it before. It can still make you think and force both of you to figure it out together. The main storyline doesn't change though, so they still end in the same way. While it's commendable, it's also a pain in the ass for completionists. Each Shores of Gold Tall Tale asks players to complete it 5 separate times in order to earn a commendation. If you are going for full commendation or achievement completion, then you have to grind. If you want to earn rare cosmetics or titles, then you'll have to do it too. And it feels cheap. Even those randomized fragments of each Tall Tale do not justify having to redo the content so many times. 2 or 3 times would be fine, 5 is just an overkill. Seabound Soul and Heart of Fire are two separate tall tales. These do not form any greater story arc and are approachable at any time. Still, you can say that they are connected by their theme. I would say that those adventures feel a little bit more refined. They are easier to understand and to figure out what players have to do. Both Seabound Soul and Heart of Fire offer an impressive music and visuals, especially the latter with its awesome cave system opening up into three separate obstacle courses provoking pirates to redo detail just to see the other trap corridors. Ooh. I like this level. Okay, jumping puzzle. Oh. I tread carefully. <laughs> Look at me how I'm doing it, on my screen. Oh. You need to do it at the edge. Okay, great. At the edge. Great job! Okay, we've, we've got it. I was just watching. Okay, that's the first place to stay okay up okay look at me when it... oh. ah jumping puzzle okay but i think it might be time so we don't have it's time ah. oh! Oh! that's so cool no. First without it, then we shift. Faster! Oh, that was so close. <laughs> the last story arc is connected to Pirates of the Caribbean. Short rant here. Fortnite popularized various cross promotion events, and I'm sure that they definitely increase sales. But so many games keep overdoing those promotions to the point of actually losing its own identity. So when this trend started, I actually liked it, but right now I'm strongly against. I just don't like sacrificing the game's integrity for something that usually takes the immersion and throws it out of the window. Still, at least Pirates of the Caribbean fits thematically. This story arc spans across five tall tales. It describes how Jack Sparrow got into Sea of Thieves and we, players, have to rescue him. Jack is chased by Davy Jones, who forms a sinister pact with other evildoers of Sea of Thieves and it's up to us to stop them. Each tale is pretty huge and offers a lot of content. Those adventures are structured in a different way. They do not offer any random changing set pieces. They are fully on rails, but they have a lot of side content. It rewards exploration inside the tale and can be extremely interesting. For this reason, the content referring to the Pirates of Caribbean feels more like a Disney theme park. That's all. Make for my salvation. And all I'll say is... What is that infernal noise? That's Shit. infernal noise what? to you, mate. Jack Sparrow. 
Ooh, that's David Jones' ship. Flying Dutchman from the movie. <gasps> what is this? This is from the movie. This mate is the inner sanctum of the most and vengeful creature to sail the sea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We will have to play it. Okay, you want to do the puzzle? I can try. Okay, sure. Okay. It's definitely not working. Should I try then? Try it. Then let me. Okay. Let's see. It. What? 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 There are multiple references to the movies, signature locations and ships. Players can meet familiar characters, but it's all presented in a pretty linear way. Don't get me wrong, it's still awesome, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I'm actually a side character in this story. However I feel about the cross-promotion thing, this is definitely a noteworthy piece of content. Pirates of the Caribbean Tall Tales offer an interesting spin on Sea of Thieves formula. This is a short story about learning. It happened pretty early in our pirate careers. We sailed on a renowned galleon, that's what C said. Our cheerful voyage started by exploring some islands and completing quests. Excellent. O, tu jest dziura, trzeba załat... Możesz, no oczywiście, że możesz. Nie wiedziałam. I kurwa, dziwne, ominąłem dwa te, została mi tylko ostatnia pułapka, ostatnia... Te mnie dziabła. I mnie one shot tyło. Bo one one shot tyło. I tu jest jakiś trójzom, kto to przyniósł, Wojty? Eee, tak. Nie, ja go przyniosłam. Znaczy, Wojty go znalazł. No, 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 bez różnicy. No, już się nie przerzucajmy. W każdym razie... Nie, pożywam go tam tylko, no. Właśnie, on napierdala dość fajnie. Eee... Aha! O, kurwa, statek stopi, statek stopi, statek stopi! Padłem, 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 padłem! No tutaj Ale mamy mów. tego robota i jedna osoba ze mną będzie musiała płynąć i grać, żeby mnie węże nie kąsały. To ja będę... Rzucę tutaj te czachy i ci będę grał. We even found a pig and a snake which we caught into cages. Then we came to that fateful moment. We found the chest of sorrow. In our naive greed we took it to our ship. We thought that we were so clever by making my wife take the chest and hang on the ladder outside of the ship for the whole journey back to the outpost. Nie mam pomysłu jaką może dać Androwix. O nie. Co? Gdzie? Muzyka. Czyli co to jest? Coś. Okay, coś nas tak, zaatakuje. Tak. Coś dużego? Then we got attacked by the skeleton galleon. Inexperienced as we were, we panicked. To chyba wyjeb tą skrzynkę i pomóż tam. Gdzie są kule? O o, leci. Kurwa, nie, ja. albo... Nie! Pomóżcie mi z naprawianiem! Topimy się! Ja co? Dobra, no, ja wyciągaj wodę. Ja już widzę dwie dziury. Wiem Dobra, teraz trzeba wyciągać wodę, bo oni są w takim miejscu, że tam. Może deski czy ci pomóc, Shander? Ej, 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 Monika, ty nie wyrzuciłaś tej płaczącej skrzyni, czy wyrzuciłaś? Nie ma. W sensie jest za burtą. No, bo tu że ona ryczy. No nie... If you kept hearing crying during the combat, you are not mistaken. It turned out that when we tried to throw the chest of sorrow into the water, it got caught somewhere in ship's hull. So it kept crying during and after combat, effectively sinking our ship. Utopiliśmy ich, mamy ich! Tak, poszli! Tak. E, Obniżyć wszystkie żagle. I żagle na zero. I lipa, kurwa! Ty, topimy się. Czemu nikt nie mówi? To mówię, że lipa cały czas! Kurwa. Nie mówię, dopiero teraz powiedziałeś, jest po nas. Utopiliśmy się. O kurwa. 
Unfortunately, the pig drowned, but we still had the cage with the snake alive. In order to keep it calm, we had to play songs for the snake throughout our whole roboting journey. Piotrek, syrena tu jest. Nie naciskaj. Nie gada jest, no. Nie gada, no się czeski zbiera. Kurwa, krzesło przynoszę, ja pierdolę, co mamy na tym statku. Powiem wam tak, widocznie musiało się Czeska tak była? stać. Ona się gdzieś zaczepiła o statek i nas zatapiała cały czas na bieżąco. Wszyscy wsiadać na robota. Już, już nawiguję, czekajcie. Ja będę, będę zatrzymał ten kurwa. Dobra, do, dobrze, piękny pójdziesz, bo już Dobra, widać, widać dobrze, wystrzel, no, widać wystrzel. To widać. Wiem, że ja kurwa, piękny. jaka Jestem akcja. Ja That's how we learn not to underestimate chest of sorrow. So, with all that being said, some of you might ask, what's the endgame? Sea of Thieves doesn't have a defined endgame. For this reason, the game might not cater to players focusing on progressing their characters through making them more powerful. In this game, the moment you log in the first time, your power level is pretty much the same as on your 100th login. What matters is your actual experience and skill within the game, as well as fulfilling your personal goals. The only snippet of actual power progression can be assigned into owning captain ships. As they allow you to use sovereign stations at outposts, it actually gives you an edge, as it's much faster and more comfortable to sell your loot through the sovereign faction. The real endgame is anything you want it to be. I know that it sounds like such a weak statement, a non-argument which could be used to describe other games' weaker endgames as something more meaningful. But in Sea of Thieves, this statement rings true. This is truly a sandbox experience. It's designed to give players a plethora of various ways to enjoy the game, activities to do, goals to chase, but it's the players who are the heart of the adventure. Let's go for the brig with open crew, confirm assemble. How are you, mate? Good. I'm fine. Oh, there's the other guy. Okay. Hello. Okay, what do you guys want to do? Any requests? Thank you. Do you have... A, do, does any one of you have a voyage for the... Uh, Skull of Destiny, maybe? Okay, he went away. Oh. That was fast. And that's playing with randoms. Hello. Wanna do Athena? Your tavern. The Spirit Lord Tavern. Ah, he's my <laughs> Your friends, huh? Congrats. Ha! Now you're really part of the crew. But there's still much to be done. For me, the fabulous commendation system and the achievements were the main reasons that kept me playing. I would pick which kind of challenge I wanted to complete. But it doesn't have to work for every player. 
whether you'll set your goals to finish the whole narrative arc, get as many cosmetic items as possible, hunt the rarest shark, max out all of the reputations, or chase vicious thrills of naval combat. One thing stays the same, after each run you will remember all the crazy things that happened to you, chaotic interactions with other crews, hectic chases or cashing in enormous amount of gold for your hard earned work. Your adventures and stories are the end game. While Sea of Thieves is full of PvP, conflict and stealing, the game can also create some wonderful, wholesome moments. Aha, okay, no problem. Gdzie zabiję go? Chciałem tylko podziękować. Nie ma jednak. Dobra. Puszczam. I'm gonna try to come to your ship, don't attack me. Hello. Can you yep. take it from me? Thank you very much. I hope I already managed to establish that the core design of Sea of Thieves is very strong with solid foundations, dripping with potential. Rare and Microsoft do not let their game fester without meaningful content updates. As we already left behind the 5th Sea of Thieves anniversary, I think it's clear that the game is carefully taken care of by the developers. Each new season adds new separate branches to the great content tree. As I told you in the story section, Rare constantly develops the narrative of the game by releasing timed adventures and mysteries. The story events welcome players to leave their mark on the general history of the game. I could watch in real time as new Golden Sands outpost slowly changed into Port Merrick, a direct effect of players' actions. It's awesome. The steady influx of smaller content keeps Sea of Thieves fresh, but it's the seasonal updates that draw the most attention. Rare changed the game, which at release was lacking content in the vigorous, lively world full of things to do. Tall tales, underwater shrines, phantom fortresses, heck, even fishing, those activities were added post launch. I've started my adventure in season 8, the season which introduced matchmaking into PvP. I was eagerly awaiting for season 9 as I wanted to see what kind of new content will be added into the game. The transition from season 8 into season 9 went in an impressively fluid manner, no server crashes or lags. Season 9 could be a bit of a letdown to some players as it did not add any groundbreaking new content. It focused mostly on quality of life improvements. I'm fine with it as it dramatically improved solo play, making events scale to the number of players attending them. Bah! One of the most influential changes was the harpoon change. Season 9 also added the aforementioned chest of fortune to the force of fortune, the most valuable treasure ever released. For the first month afterwards, every Ford of Fortune was a battleground. To this day, if a crew decides to sail into FOF, you need to be ready to fight. This season also increased the chance for player's ship to be attacked on the open seas by the skeleton ships, Megalodon or Kraken. It made the world of the game feel more vibrant and dynamic. <laughs> Kul nie mam? Nagrywam, będę miał przynajmniej nagrane walkę z O kurwa! 
Co? Zjadł mnie! Patrzcie, że jestem! Kurwa! Trzastem pomocy! Puść go! Puść żuka! Kurwa! A! Kurwa! My only criticism regarding season 9 is that they made the world feel less dangerous. Kraken, Megalodons and Skeletal Galleons scale with players' numbers, which make them awfully easy while selling a sloop. While I agree that some scaling is fine, I dislike the fact that the toughest enemies don't pose a threat anymore. It's just an inconvenience. The only instance when a Megalodon or a Kraken attack can be truly dangerous is during combat with other players. Then it's a real game changer. This is a good moment to talk about monetization, the bane of modern gaming. Sea of Thieves uses a very common nowadays season pass. In here it's called a plunder pass. It offers two tiers of rewards, the free tier and the paid tier. Each new season offers new plunder pass. Free tier of items usually encompasses one or two cool skins, the rest of them is mediocre. The paid version holds more desirable flashy cosmetics. I find this rendition of season pass quite okay. It doesn't force players to buy the paid version and the progress through each level on the seasonal ladder happens quite fast. Sea of Thieves has its own in-game shop. Of course it gets frequently updated. The way I see it, it's there, it doesn't offer any pay to win mechanics, so let's just let it be. Especially since Rare allows players to get some premium currency through in-game activities. I always found more appeal in skins which could be obtained through some difficult feats of strength in the game's world. Sea of Thieves has that, so I don't care about the shop. With Rare's and Microsoft's philosophy regarding releasing new content, I can sit comfortably knowing that Sea of Thieves will continue to thrive thanks to new content being added into the game. This is the ambush. We found ourselves stranded on Reaper's hideout after Reaper Galleon sank our brigantine. That's when we started plotting. Tylko trzeba by ci trochę zaczekać. Oni muszą skończyć walczyć, no ale na pewno tu wrócą, bo będą chcieli, wiesz, otworzyć rzeczy. Mając nadzieję, że wiesz, Anusz się uda, jak mają jakieś gunpowdery, te stronghold gunpowdery, po prostu ich wysadzić. O ile? O ile? Ale... Gdzieś, bo jak oni tutaj podpłyną od tej strony, a podpłyną. Tak, dobra. Stop, co? Bo wiecie, jak oni kogokolwiek tu zobaczą, to tyle, jeżeli idzie o zasadzkę. Czemu nie popłyniesz do nich? Aha, bo rekin cię zje? Ech, ile razy mam. Dobra, powtarzam ostatni raz. Jak <śmiech> będą we frenzji wyładowywania rzeczy i będą nieuważni. Co to mnie wtedy... zabił, jest na fermenie. To wtedy chcę wbić im na statek. Co jest ten sklub tak się chował, żeby mnie sklub nie zobaczył? Ja siedzę pod Sklub jest za nimi, wiesz, że im na dółka. O, opierdalają się. Fortunately for us, the Galleon sailed away chasing the sloop. But it turned out that they left behind one of their own, selling a portion of their treasure. Jest, jest tu gość, Rybald chodź, we dwójkiego musimy wyjechać. I, iść tu do ciebie? Słyszę gościa, słyszę gościa. Iść do ciebie, czy? Ej, do Trzeba go zabić, chodź. Nie wiem, on kurwa jest. Czemu no się dalej? Chodź, 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 chodź. Ten biegnę. Sano tu dalej, sano tu dalej. Wajnie, sano tu dalej. Jestem na judo. Help me, eh? Mam na skanadu. Jest, nie żyw. Mam na skanadu. Dam szybko ich rzeczy. Ale się teraz będą między sobą srać. O, nie sprawdziłeś dokładnie. Widzisz, o tym chodzi. A few moments later. Wszystko damy radę im tam. Ciekawe, jak duża część lutu to jest. O kurwa, tam jest. Jest blisko. Co już to? Poczekaj. Zabicie? A tak. Ok, no kila do uno. Ja zdążyłem mu sprzedać ten. Zdążyłem mu sprzedać ten. Mam go! Jest, 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 mówi. Przygotuj się, żeby zjeść. Jest. Jest tu drugi. Oj! Tam mają nas. Aj! Fuck. 
Before we perished, we managed to sell a decent portion of their loot. Pulling off that weird steel felt satisfying. Commendations are basically your in-game progression checklists. You can measure progression by your wealth, rank with PvP factions, rank with regular factions or emissary value per month, but it's all connected in the menu under Reputation tab. And the commendations are the most solid way to check your advancement within any fragment of the game that holds your interest. Commendations are basically another form of in-game achievements. Bah! They are closely tied to some trophies. Commendations track your progress. Many of them reward players with specific cosmetic items or special cosmetic currency. Another big plus towards Rare's game design. I love when there are cool cosmetics locked behind actual in-game challenges. I place a lot of value to those items as they represent actual skill and dedication of the players holding them. Bravo! For me, commendations and achievements were a fuel driving me towards my new goals. For other players they might not be that important, yet still I bet there are many pirates who chose one or two specific items they want to get from the massive commendation list and grind content relevant to obtaining those. I like commendations. The completionist within me finds something magical while looking as all the bars slowly rise into completion and the fact that there are in-game rewards assigned to it only makes it better. He shouldn't be placing that gunpowder on his ship, especially if he's at the, at the port. Where is this guy? Where is this guy? This is the part where I'm going to analyze 100 to 200 most recent Steam reviews for the title. I'm doing it mostly to see what other gamers think about the game. At the time of making this video, Sea of Thieves accumulated more than 243,000 user reviews. Out of those, 90% are positive. A surprising score given the game's disappointing launch. But it only serves to prove a point that if developers keep working on their games, producing quality content and meaningful improvements, it can change weak title into blossoming strong experience. Still, it doesn't justify releasing unfinished products. Looking at the overwhelming amount of positive opinions, the first thing that I can see are the reviews simply praising the game by describing their pirate adventures. Gamers keep posting their various stories from the game. I'm glad to see it as it just reinforces the adventurous nature of the title. Each run is a story. Many reviews are very chaotic. People tend to pick one or two activities they really liked and just talk about them. Negative reviews are more focused. People who disliked Sea of Thieves voiced their opinions precisely about their gripes with the game. First and the most common argument against Rare's title refers to PvP and toxic player base. Numerous players dislike the PvEVP format and would like a safe PvE mode. Then players who keep attacking and sinking other ships, taking their cargo, are being labeled as toxic. Ok, I believe that the game has this strong appeal and a very unique identity thanks to its PvEVP gameplay. It's unforgiving, sometimes not fair, but thanks to it, Sea of Thieves creates a distinctive, memorable experience. Yeah. Being sung and losing all your loot is cruel, it sucks, but when you get to do it, whew, it feels satisfying. This is Sea of Thieves. What does thieves do? They steal. Exactly. This is an integral part of the game. I think that's only the one guy. I don't have any reason to suspect that they are two. So you're not gonna kill him? I'm just curious where he's going. I would pretty, I would much, I would rather just take the ship or do something when he will leave the ship. Oh, okay. That's the thing. But for it, for 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 it to happen, he need to get somewhere first. Or maybe, yeah. He wants to stop here. Okay. Use the anchor. What is he harpooning?
there are two of them. One of them is fuck. There are two. One of them is shooting. The other one is harpooning. Yeah, they're out. I'm raising the anchor. I'm taking their ship. I'm gonna sell it to the skeletons. There are skeletons and other players. I'm selling to them. Not every game has to cater to every person's taste. That's fine. Sea of Thieves is made this way on purpose and I adore it. And about that toxic player base. Every online game has some despicable people who cannot control themselves. Unfortunately, in Steam reviews, toxicity is usually referred to other crews who just sank someone. Well, you know, they kinda play the game properly. If they make a decision to attack you, it's part of the game. If they keep cursing at you, using slurs, yeah, that's definitely bad. It shouldn't happen, but simply fighting for loot is what Sea of Thieves is about. Another set of negative reviews talks about tedium. You have to do a lot of things yourself. Crates do not magically sell themselves. Well, just as I said before, this is a deliberate decision of the developers. The game is designed this way and is better because of it. That's how I see it. Both negative and positive reviews talk about the game being buggy or that the hitboxes are unreliable. I agree. There are numerous bugs. Bah! One of my friends even had a problem where he couldn't play the game on his PC through Game Pass as there was some issue preventing him from launching the game. It's not an isolated incident. There are people who cannot play Game Pass titles on PC, but that's related more to Game Pass than to the game probably. Still, I find it funny. Ah, and I noticed one thing in Steam reviews that I forgot about. The game structure favors longer playing sessions. It's kinda counterintuitive to play the game for only half an hour, as by this time you won't be able to accumulate any real plunder worth selling. Most of the voyages or toll tales take at least an hour to complete, so take that into account if you are time starved. Let's just make this clear. Sea of Thieves might not be a game designed for people who dislike PvP. The same goes for gamers focused on stat and power progression. I said might, because I am actually a person who likes a decent power progression system in my games. Having said that, Sea of Thieves managed to charm me completely. In words of this Steam reviewer, maybe Sea of Thieves are the friends we met along the way. I think they don't see us. They reduce the mass completely. Okay, let's shoot them. Fall to the water. Please, please, guys. Please, please. Don't kill me, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank what you. What do you have in here? What? I we don't go in. Okay, no, okay, anyways, the question is the, what do we want to do with those guys? I mean, I'm, are we leaving them alone? And we are, you know, a good boys? Yeah. I mean, I, to be honest, I want the ashen chest from them. Okay. What? I'm taking it. If they will try to fight us, then we will sink them. We are, we are okay, okay. okay, bye guys. Thank you. No problem. I mean, I kinda wanted to rob them, but I kinda felt sorry after they kept asking not to kill them. So, that would <laughs> okay. be there. Sea of Thieves is gonna be a tough game for every completionist. Not because achievements are particularly hard, it's because titles trophies require a lot of time to be completed. At the time of making this review, which is Season 9, the game offers 213 challenges rewarded with separate achievements. Most of them are tied to specific in-game commendations. Also, in a true live service fashion, each new season adds a new wave of trophies to collect, 
When Season 9 was introduced, it added only 5 new achievements, but the numbers vary between seasons. So, you can be sure that as time passes and new achievements will be added into the game, it will surely pull me back to Sea of Thieves. Ok, let's dissect the structure of achievement hunting in Rare's title. First, the random miscellaneous achievements. In here we start from the most popular trophy awarded for eating your first fruit to more specific challenges. Like for example talking to other pirates while waiting on Ferry of the Damned, buying skins for your weapons or playing a musical instrument while your ship's sinking. The thing is that you will get some of those achievements naturally, while others are pretty specific so you need to be aware of their requirements. An interesting group of trophies refers to interactions with other crews, whether as an enemies or allies. To be specific, there's a trophy for drinking in a tavern with other crew or playing instruments in a tune as a group of 5 people. Hold my grog is awarded for shooting yourself from a cannon and landing an enemy ship. The greatest race of all time requires two ships to sail next to each other for a while without shooting at each other. Those are really cool achievements which force you to interact with other players or try to get another group of friends and land on the same server so you can try to do those. And guess what? I tried both ways. <laughs> friendly, friendly, don't worry, we don't want to fight. We just want to give you gifts for Reaper. Okay. Don't worry. We don't want to fight. We are not going to take loot from the skeletons, don't worry. We have gifts, uh, we want to give them to you just for the commendation, okay? May I request permission to come aboard? Oh, permission granted. Hello. Can you yes. take it from me? May I ask you one more thing? I, I'll help you get the loot, maybe. Because there's an achievement for throwing bucket of vomit at you when you have a sword uh, drawn out. Can we do this? But I need to eat the, a bug first. So I need to get sick. Just uh, a second. Okay, I'm going to puke soon. <laughs> Just wait. Okay, I'm puking. Okay, and um, b block. Can you block? Thank you. The greatest achievement in this segment is the one connected to Glitterbird. It requires 8 people. We did it on two allied galleons. 8 people tried to queue to the game at the same time on their own galleons. Then we marked ourselves with reaper flags, in order to see if we managed to get two people on the same server. When we managed to do that, the rest just filled in the spots on two galleons. From that you need to sail to Plunder Valley, find a tree with bottles hanging from it, place every person on the correct spot with a correct instrument and play Become Chanty during the evening. And that's all I'm gonna say. This is a wonderful, wholesome experience and I encourage everyone to give it a try. Every faction in the game has a decent number of achievements assigned to itself. Reaching the highest reputation within the faction is rewarded. So is sailing as its emissary. Then there are faction specific trophies, usually referring to grade 5 commendations. Golden Hoarders award an achievement for selling 300 shipwrecked chests to them or for selling a total of 360 captain's chests. No mount left behind is awarded for looting all gold piles within a single vault. The same goes for other factions. Order of Souls rewards players for killing 1000 skeleton captains or destroying 500 ghost ships. These numbers in itself generate a rather great amount of hours which will need to be spent on certain activities in order to meet achievement requirements. But that's not all. What if I told you that each faction offers separate achievements for sailing 1000 nautical miles while being on a voyage for it? That's a lot! While it certainly is obtainable, it still poses a tremendous task in front of completionists. In my over 400 hours spent in game, I managed to sail around 300 miles on Golden Hoarder voyages and about 200 for Merchant Alliance and Order of Souls. I tried to always place a voyage on the table while I had a chance. Do you now understand the massive time commitment? 
But that's not all. Each faction has this emissary value table which resets each month. You can check there if your current value allows you to be rewarded with certain cosmetics at the end of the month. The rarest rewards are given to the players who are placed in the top 25% highest emissary value holders. It's actually not that hard to get into the top quarter for each faction, but it takes time and effort each month. Now, every faction, besides Hunter's Call, asks you to reach the top 25% 5 times in, in order to reward you with an achievement. That's at least 5 months of gentle grind. And there are challenges, which might require even more time and grind. How do I feel about this achievement structure? I actually like it. This is an online live service game. Players are supposed to enjoy it for a long time. In this type of titles, I'm actually okay with trophies reserved for dedicated players. You can call me an elitist, but I like to brag about my rarest achievements, because usually they are associated with commendation and dedication. If Sea of Thieves would have been a single player only title, then it would be a different story. Another big advantage of achievement structure is the fact that it rewards players for all kinds of activities. You want to do skeleton forts? There are various different achievements assigned to it. You want to explore underwater shrines? Another set of achievements. The same goes for story missions and PvP. Every activity has at least a couple of achievements tied to it. The cool thing is that each trophy group has some easy, fast challenges and then there are harder, more time-consuming ones. I have two main issues regarding achievement completion. First, those weird descriptions which in some cases don't explain what you have to do. Fortunately, it seems like Rare dropped their poetic trophy verses after the base game was released and the newer achievements have straightforward descriptions. My second issue regarding achievements refers to story missions. Every tall tale offers two achievements, first one for completing the tale and second one for completing every commendation connected to that tale. The problem arises with Shores of Gold story arc. In order to max out each tall tale, you have to complete it five separate times. This feels like an unnecessary time sink. Redoing various story missions doesn't feel like it substantially enriches your experience or unveils any new revelations about the narrative. The only saving grace are the random elements built into each story. In general, the main difficulty of Sea of Thieves' achievement hunt refers to its massive time consumption. Most of the challenges are pretty easy to do even for a solo player. The PvP trophies might be a little bit more demanding, especially the one asking for a strike of 4 enemy player ships sunk in a row. But after some PvP practice, everything can be done. And it's satisfying. Get ready. Get ready and focus! Dobra, ale do góry masz ty. Ja to pierwsze ammo naładuję. Bo się nie zdziwia, jak ta jedna nami. kula zawaszy. Robią to samo, co tam ci nie kręcą w ogóle, nie kręcą. Trzymaj ich, my mamy mieć zasięg To lecimy? Ty tak załatam na zajście. Wejdę do nich, wejdę do nich. Masz ty? Wejdę. Wchodzę, 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 wchodzę. Prawej. Jest... Jest ankor? Jest Anko. jest bok nas. Ludzie, nie mam konta. Zabiłem jednego. O my no, kurwa, patrzcie. Ale jak lewo, lewo, zabiłem lewo. dwóch, zabiłem dwóch, zabiłem dwóch! Nie ma, jeden jest w wodzie. Patrzcie, no, trzeba dupę jest... ładujemy. Leje im się, leje im się na dół, leje im się e, na dół. E, chyba w tu tak. jest chyba teraz. Lewo, prawo. Nie Uważajcie, czy nie... Nie ma ich, nie ma ich, patrzę. Nie ma. Ona nie jest, zala, kurwa. Nie, 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 nie ma ich, nie ma ich. Zalewa ich, nie ma ich tutaj w ogóle. Uwa, bo mogą pomagać im wejść was. Na, na środkowym się już leje, na środkowym się leje. Już prawie, utrzymać się chwilę. Zaraz za tonu, zaraz za tonu! We have this! Full streak! Taki szender, konia walnie. Fuck! Idę zobaczyć na dół. Sucho, ale... GG guys, GG! Zobaczmy, Piotrek jaki... Cały środkowy szagiel nam się pali. Tu się pali. GG. Sea of Thieves is the ultimate story maker. First, it tells a story of a game released to a mixed reception. Lacking in content but having this one very important ingredient. The solid foundation. Rare, the game's developers seized the opportunity and kept working on their title, delivering the sandbox experience only a few other titles could match. 
current day Sea of Thieves is overflowing with content, opening multiple different ways for players to have fun within the game. Light-hearted art style, solid graphics and great soundtrack enforce the pirate fantasy and the feeling of wondrous exploration. This is a PvE VP title. It's designed with some tedium in mind. Players have to manually carry and sell their treasures. All of that is done on purpose, as it makes players susceptible to other crew's attacks. Naval battles require skill as there is no power progression within the game. For this reason, some players might be deterred from the title. Losing your hard-earned loot feels infuriating at times, but it sneakily hooks players into the gameplay loop. For each stressful extraction, naval battle, ship chase, the feeling of finally winning against other crews and then finally being able to sell everything you managed to plunder feels addictively satisfying. In Sea of Thieves, no two runs are the same. The ingenious design of this title creates a perfect sandbox with tons of activities and then throws players into the mix. This is the ultimate story maker, as it creates the best, most memorable stories in gaming. I strongly recommend this game. Hey, I wanted to thank you for watching this video. Sea of Thieves took its toll on my capabilities on producing new videos. That's why the content was kinda slow the last few months. I'm probably going to start another long game soon, which will do the same, but I will try to play some smaller games in the meantime in order to provide some content. Anyways, if you liked the video consider leaving a like, comment on what you think about it and maybe subscribe for more similar videos in the future. If you didn't like it then by all means tell me why. My question to you after this video is, what are your craziest Sea of Thieves stories? So that's all from me, bye.